Travel Robot Presence Top 10 Things to Do in Massachusetts Here is the list to do things in Massachusetts. The history of this epic state is tied to numerous bank robberies in Massachusetts has something for everyone. Take your pick from tourist attractions that range from classical music concerts by a world-class symphony orchestra to perfecting your tan on a pristine beach. As one of the original 13 colonies, Massachusetts has preserved more than its share of historic landmarks from as far back as Pilgrim days. But it's not all history. In Boston's vibrant Faneuil Hall Marketplace, you'll find fashions as new as tomorrow. Landscapes are just as varied, and as you explore these must-see sites, you'll find rolling mountains, waves crashing on rocky shores, green pastures and farmlands, deep forests, and beautiful little postcard-perfect villages that Norman Rockwell immortalized in his paintings. To be sure of finding the best places to visit, plan your trip using this handy list of the top attractions in Massachusetts. So before we get started, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for our future updates. Number 10. Freedom Trail Some of Colonial America's most iconic landmarks mark Boston's three-mile Freedom Trail as it winds through the old city's narrow streets to connect 16 historic monuments and attractions. Follow the red brick line and brass medallions in the pavement, from the visitor center in the Boston Common all the way to the 54-gun frigate U.S. Constitution Old Ironsides at the Charlestown Navy Yard. Along the way, wander through two old burying grounds to find the graves of Paul Revere, John Hancock, and the first female to step off the Mayflower. The Old State House, Boston's oldest public building, was the scene of the infamous Boston Massacre, when five colonists were killed by British soldiers. A few steps off the Freedom Trail at One Milk Street is the birthplace of Benjamin Franklin, a site marked by a bust of the Patriot, who was born here in 1706. Number 9. Faneuil Hall Built in 1740-42, Faneuil Hall was given to the city as a market hall by merchant Peter Faneuil. Along with the market, it was a place for public meetings, well used by colonists protesting British taxes and other grievances. In the mid-19th century, it was the scene of anti-slavery meetings, rallies, and speeches. The ancient and honorable artillery museum on its top floor preserves paintings of battles, along with arms and uniforms. True to its origins, the ground floor is filled with market stalls, which flow out into the three nearby market halls, Quincy Market, North Market, and South Market, to make up Faneuil Hall Marketplace. This entire area is almost always lively, filled with shoppers, buskers, tourists, and workers from nearby offices enjoying their lunches on the benches that line the wide promenades between the market halls. The halls themselves are filled with food stalls, push carts, shops, restaurants, and cafes. Number 8. Cape Cod Beaches Cape Cod is a long, curving peninsula jutting out into the Atlantic, protecting Cape Cod Bay with its northward curve. Most of its 560 miles of shoreline is long white sand beaches, often backed by dunes of waving seagrass. Many of them are crowded in midsummer, but there is enough sand for everyone, although not always enough parking for their cars. Look for the more uncrowded beaches on the quieter North Shore, along Route 6A, near Sandwich or Brewster. Chatham and Orleans both have especially scenic white beaches on the Atlantic-facing shore. Cape Cod's beaches are among the most beautiful places to visit in Massachusetts. Cape Cod National Seashore protects nearly the whole eastern coast of the Cape, keeping a 40-mile stretch of sand and dunes almost unchanged since the 1800s. Walk its white sands, spot nesting shorebirds, and follow the Atlantic White Cedar Swamp Trail through its beautiful cedar woodlands. Stop at the Salt Pond or Provincetown Visitor Centers for maps, information, and passes. Lifeguards are on duty at beaches near parking areas from late June through August. Number 7. Boston Common and Public Garden Swan Boats The Boston Common, along with the adjacent public garden, paints a large swath of green in the very heart of the city. Downtown streets border one end, Commonwealth Avenue, and Back Bay the other. To one side is stately Beacon Hill. The Freedom Trail begins in the Common. The State House overlooks it. The Common spans Boston's history, 
with the central burying ground of 1756 at one corner and the next generation of Bostonians splashing in the frog pond in the summer and skating on it in the winter. The Public Garden, America's first botanical garden, is more formal in its design, with beds of flowers and an 1869 suspension bridge over the pond. Beloved by locals and tourists for the charming swan boats that have glided across its surface since the 1870s. Don't think these are there just for kids, most of the smiling passengers are adults. Number 6. Fenway Park With all the nostalgic appeal of an old-fashioned ballpark, Fenway Park is beloved not just by New Englanders and Red Sox fans, but by baseball fans everywhere. Little change in appearance from its opening in the spring of 1912. Fenway Park still has its hand-operated scoreboard and the legendary Green Monster, the 37-foot green wall in left field. While most other cities have built new stadiums in the city outskirts, Bostonians have kept the old tradition of an inner-city venue for its home team, even though it has the lowest seating capacity of any major league ballpark. Tickets for one of the only 33,871 seats are usually scarce, but you can see the park on a lively tour that's fun even for tourists who are not baseball fans. Number 5. Harvard Square and Museums Harvard University, one of the world's leading academic centers, is an attraction in itself, filled with historic buildings and exceptional museums. But its surroundings are just as appealing to visit as the shops, restaurants, cafes, and bookstores around Harvard Square throb with activity at any time of year. The Harvard Art Museums now combine three major collections, each of which formerly ranked as major U.S. art museums. Fogg Art Museum specializes in Italian early Renaissance art, and the Bush Reisinger concentrates on German and Northern European Expressionist art, with works by Kandinsky and Klee. The museum's Chinese jade and bronzes, Japanese prints, Indian art, and Greco-Roman antiquities comprise some of the finest collections in the world. Four more world-class museums sit two blocks away on Oxford Street. Harvard's research collections, displayed in the Peabody Museum of Archaeology and Ethnology, the Mineralogical Museum, the Museum of Comparative Zoology, and the Botanical Museum. The exceptional Native American exhibits show art and artifacts in the context of a living culture that changed as contact with Europeans increased. The best-known exhibits here, however, are the more than 3,000 glass flowers and plants, so realistic that it's hard to believe they are man-made. The secret of how these were made died with their creators, and the process has never been replicated. You can take lively free walking tours of the Harvard campus led by students. Number 4. Museum of Fine Arts and the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum Two neighboring museums, both overlooking the green expanse of Boston's Fenway, trace fine and applied art from the ancient world to modern masters. The Boston Museum of Fine Arts is renowned for its collections of Impressionist paintings, Asian and Persian fine arts, and works from ancient Greece, Egypt, and the Middle East. An entire American wing displays outstanding collections of American paintings, decorative arts, folk art, furniture, silver, and design from pre-Columbian to modernist. A few steps away is the somewhat eccentric collection of Isabella Stewart Gardner, bequeathed as a museum, along with her Venetian-style palace in which these treasures are displayed. The more than 2,500 works range from paintings by Rembrandt and Vermeer to exquisite handmade lace and medieval furniture. Behind her palace is a glass encased building designed by Italian architect Renzo Piano, creating spaces for music and contemporary art. Number 3. Mayflower II and Plymouth Patuxent Museums In December 1620, separatists from the Church of England, called Pilgrims, landed at Plymouth after failing to reach their original destination in Virginia, making Plymouth the first permanent European settlement in New England. You can step back into their world at the Living History Villages at Plymouth Patuxent Museums, formerly known as Plymouth Plantation. In the 17th century English village, costume interpreters, who'd never leave their 17th century persona, recreate the experience of living in early colonial America as they go about daily tasks of gardening, building, cooking, and military training. Craftsmen use authentic tools to make objects common in the 17th century, Plymouth Patuxent Museums also explore the lives and culture of Native Americans at the Patuxent home site, 
a recreation of a Wampanoag village, where you'll see dwellings, gardens, and artifacts. Here, descendants of the area's first inhabitants demonstrate how their ancestors lived before and after the colonists' arrival. Be sure to visit the full-scale reproduction of the Mayflower Mayflower II, fresh from a four-year restoration and birthed at Plymouth Pier, to learn about the historic voyage from costume guides representing the passengers and crew. Number 2. Salem's Historic Houses While early homes full of period furnishings are thick on New England soil, few places can offer the number, quality, and variety of those you can tour in the former China trade port of Salem. What's more, they represent a wide range of Salem's history and culture, beginning with the Salem Witch Trials of 1692 and including the House of Seven Gables, immortalized in the book by Nathaniel Hawthorne, whose 1804 birthplace is also open. The 1642 Witch House was the home of Judge Jonathan Corwin, who presided at the Witchcraft Trials, and it's the only remaining building that's directly connected with the trials. As the hub of the China trade, it's not surprising that Salem streets are lined with homes built by men who grew rich in that era as captains or merchants. Two homes, the Hawks and Derby Houses, are part of the Salem Maritime National Historic Site. Several others are part of the exceptional Peabody Essex Museum Complex. The 1727 Crown Shield Bentley House, the 1684 John Ward House, and the 1804 Brick Gardner Pingree House whose interior preserves work by master builder Samuel Missentire. The Peabody Essex Museum explores the China trade, its participants, and their homes in its extensive collections, which include an entire original 18th-century home from China's Wuzhou region, reassembled here and open to visitors. Number 1. Whale Watch at Stoltwagen Bank National Marine Sanctuary Among the top 10 whale-watching sites in the world, the Stolwagen Bank has one of the world's most biologically productive ocean environments. At this underwater plateau in the Atlantic, at the mouth of Massachusetts Bay, you may spot several different species of whale, along with Atlantic white-sided dolphins, harbor porpoises, seals, and other marine life. More than 50 individual humpback whales have been identified and named by researchers, all dependable returnees each summer. Many of them are females that bring their new calves to Stolwagen Bank to feed in the food-rich waters and teach their calves to hunt. You can board a whale-watching tour in Gloucester or Provincetown, the closest harbors to the Stolwagen Bank, or from Boston, or several other towns on Cape Cod. For the best experience, look for a company that offers trained naturalists to provide commentary during the trips and help identify species and explain their behavior. That brings us to the end of this video. If you love similar content like this, take a look at my other videos. And if you like it, please smash the like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. If you have further questions, feel free to comment down below. See you in the next video.